Hello and welcome to BCC TV. This is Joseph Rai. We are in conversation with Vishal Bali, who is the founder of Medwell Ventures, and he's also the senior healthcare advisor to TPG Growth. In the first part of this video, we talked to him about his entrepreneurial journey, Medwell Ventures, and in this part of the video, we'll be talking to him about the healthcare sector in general. A warm welcome to you again. Thanks, sir. Let's talk data. So according to our VCC Edge data platform, the number of healthcare deals have slightly reduced compared to 2016. It's 53 this year, and last year it was 72. However, deal value has gone a little up. How do you read this trend? So I think, you know, um, investing is a cyclical trend. Right? Okay. And um, so you, the amount of capital that went behind uh, healthcare companies last year was significantly higher compared to the previous year. And that's why this year you're seeing a little bit of a ebb in that. And that's basically because a lot of activity happened last mm -hmm. year. And typically in the, in the world of private equity, in the world of venture capital, when you put enough capital behind certain companies, then you mm -hmm. want to make those companies grow. You mm -hmm. want the next phase is basically that those companies then begin to get, they've got capitalized and then these companies will grow and then the portfolio spends a lot of time and the, you know, and the deal team spends a lot of time in helping to grow those companies. So I think we are seeing that trend okay. right now. And uh, frankly, I think also if you take a look at the ecosystem, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of early stage companies, a lot of mid-stage companies got enough of growth capital. Mm -hmm. And many of the companies have got very well capitalized. Mm -hmm. um, now we'll have to see as the next wave of growth of these companies happen, when they require the next wave of capital, mm -hmm. that is when you will see a larger quantum of deals happening all mm -hmm. over again. But uh, Indian healthcare has seen a lot of private capital mm -hmm. go in. And, uh, you know, I was just doing some analysis, and over the last 25, 30 years, uh, the healthcare sector per se has received, uh, and the diagnostic sector has mm -hmm. received about $4.34 mm -hmm. billion dollars of capital. That's a lot of capital that has gone behind this sector. And, um, and of course, on the early stage side too, uh, there is enough amount of capital that has been put in by the venture capital funds. Mm -hmm. So I think that the sector is well capitalized. The companies are well capitalized for their future growth. And now it's to see them grow and uh, mm -hmm. expand either regionally or within the country of their existence. And we're also seeing a lot of activity on the IPO front as well this year. Aris Life Sciences also got listed. Aster has refiled as IPO. And more companies are planning to file their IPOs. Do you think this IPO wave is going to sustain for some more years? I think it's a very positive trend. Mm -hmm. um, if one can find exit for investors in IPOs and the market is basically beginning to see a lot of IPO activity around healthcare, which frankly is a last couple of years phenomena because for many, many yeah. years, we just had two listed players yeah. in, the, in, in, the, uh, in the hospital space, which was not a very good thing because mm -hmm. I think for any market to grow, there have to be enough number of listed players, uh, which is a potential exit and which also determines the market value of companies. So I think it's a uh, uh, it's good to see the overall IPO activity strengthen in the country, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm you know I'm keenly watching uh, the couple of IPOs mm -hmm. that are about to hit the market now. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I think for investors, it's a very good it's mm -hmm. a very good trend. And talking about hospitals, the multi-speciality sector has been the focus of investors this year. We saw, saw True North investing in Kim's, KKR doing an investment in Radiant, and then Paris raising its first private equity funding. So does it mean that consolidation in the sector could be some more years away? We'll see more of private equity deals happening here? Yeah, I think because uh, obviously there is enough and more uh, that uh, these companies, which are the second tier companies, uh, you know, where they see the opportunities of growth and their investors see the opportunity of future growth around mm -hmm. a bunch of these companies. I think the good thing is that as many of these enterprises grow, mm -hmm. there is a consolidation opportunity that can come up, which mm -hmm. is uh, from an investor perspective, which is a very positive trend too, because as more and more uh, capital goes behind mid-stage companies and as they evolve, mm -hmm. then the next round of capital that needs to happen behind the large consolidation is an opportunity which the investors see for themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's a good trend and mm -hmm. um, it is good uh, also from the point of view that in the future there could be consolidation in the future as the larger companies go through an IPO process mm -hmm. they could also consolidate a lot more of the of the mid-tier companies. Okay. So I think that's uh, 
and that's good to see. Okay. And VC Circle Research Team, we did a study on the single speciality sector, and we found out that eye care, oncology, and IVF, they are the most healthiest in terms of the financials for FY16 that we got from the ROC. What is the assessment of these three sectors, especially uh, eye care? So I think um, a lot of uh, venture cap money went mm -hmm. behind the eye care segment mm -hmm. over the last uh, five to seven years now. And um, so the most of the eye care chains have all got capitalized. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, and I think that many of them are now maturing, they are growing on the back of the capital that they have raised. On the oncology side, yep. we ourselves at TPG mm -hmm. uh, have invested behind American Oncology Institute. That company has grown phenomenally well uh, in the last one and a half years since we invested. Mm -hmm. They already have six centers. They are, they are potentially looking at another seven to eight more centers coming up mm -hmm. uh, within the country and within Asia. Uh, uh, likewise, on the mother and child side, mm -hmm. I'm seeing a similar kind of momentum in another mm -hmm. one of our portfolio companies, which is Motherboard. Mm -hmm. So I think the single specialty growth mm -hmm. and the single specialty opportunity, um, which started with the unlocking of some of these specialties from the multi-specialty mm -hmm. side, has now begun to grow a lot more aggressively. Mm -hmm. uh, it was only I for a long period yep. of time. It was dentistry. Mm -hmm. It was renal care. Mm -hmm. But suddenly we are seeing, you know, uh, both on the oncology side and the OBG side, mm -hmm. a lot more action beginning to happen. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the the momentum is right behind mm -hmm. uh, the single specialty platforms. Mm -hmm. And as you rightly said, their return on capital is better right mm -hmm. now. So you will see a lot more capital going behind the single specialty platforms. Okay, and what's your take on valuations of healthcare companies, especially public listed companies, because there's a belief that uh, some of the assets are overvalued. So Joseph, I, you know, it's difficult to sort of, uh, to sort of comment on that because fundamentally that is the market mm -hmm. uh, related uh, valuation, right? So mm -hmm. the stocks are being chased by, uh, by investors and uh, so that truly becomes the market base to that valuation. So whether mm -hmm. they are overvalued or undervalued, is difficult to say, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but uh, that also goes to show the mm -hmm. amount of investor interest, even retail investor interest, which is there in healthcare in the country. Mm -hmm. So, frankly, all of us have done the right thing by investing behind healthcare as a sector. And uh, every investor, a small, medium, large investor, which has taken a position in healthcare, mm -hmm. has probably done the right thing because of the demand supply equation of the mm -hmm. sector. So I think um, valuation is a fundamental uh, principle. There is enough math that everybody does mm -hmm. behind valuation. But those which are listed, that's market-led. And recently we understand TPG Growth is floating an investment platform focused on India, Asia Healthcare Holdings. Could you throw more light on that? So Asia Healthcare Holdings is basically uh, both the single specialty uh, companies that we invested behind, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, American Oncology Institute, yep. CDSI, and Motherhood. We've mm -hmm. just put them together under this umbrella of, uh, of Asia Healthcare Holdings, okay. basically to provide a single focus mm -hmm. to the growth of both these entities. And okay. uh, because we find that uh, there was a lot of commonality in mm -hmm. the single specialty space, uh, particularly around the management teams, around uh, basically supporting the growth of both these entities at the same time. And uh, that was the larger thesis behind putting together uh, both these single specialty businesses under a healthcare holding. Okay, and what is your belief or your thoughts on the exit scenario in India? Some say that, you know, getting exits in India is extremely difficult. So I think exits are a function of size, scale, capability, returns that has been established behind an enterprise. Uh, as you can see, uh, you know, those enterprises which have scaled well which have also provided, uh, you know, which have become profitable, which are productive, they eventually find an exit. And then there are many others which have not been able to uh, scale, mm -hmm. and which have not been able to show the right metrics in terms of their financial performance, find it difficult to exit. So I don't think it's a function of that exits are difficult. Mm -hmm. I think it's a function of what is the nature of these companies. It's a function of how capital has been utilized behind these companies. And it's a function of how they have penetrated the market and grown. So it's all a function of what the company's capabilities are, rather than a blanket structure that exits are difficult. I don't think exits are difficult for the right companies. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Thank you very once much. again.